Hey everyone, this is Dave, and today I'm extremely excited to share with you my discussion with Rocket Lab CEO, Sir Peter Beck. Recently, Peter and Adam were kind enough to do a group interview with me and several other YouTubers who invest in Rocket Lab. So I'm going to share with you my 10 or so minute portion of that interview. If you want to check the, out the other three portions, check out the channels of Vince is Bullish, Scott O, and Matt Money. I'll be sure to link those three in the description down below. Then in a day or two, I'll post the entire combined video separately in case you just want to watch the whole thing at once. If you're not already a subscriber, I hope you'll consider doing that by the end of this video. If you do find it interesting, the further reach this channel gets, the more likely I'll be able to get cool people to come on and talk to me and share those discussions with you, something I am excited to do in the future. If you are already subscribed, well, those likes, comments, and shares always help out with the algorithms as well. By the way, guys, I can promise you that Peter Beck has not turned into a ghost. I think it was just pretty bright in his in the room where he was filming. So yeah, I'm sure there'll be lots of comments about that. Okay, now with that out of the way, let's dive into today's conversation with Sir Peter Beck. Yeah, thanks for taking the time for of talking to us. Um, in terms of my first question, I was wondering a little bit about how you see the sort of medium to heavy launch market shaping up. So right now it looks like there's a lot of, you know, uh, demand that needs to be addressed, but there's also several rockets all coming online or scheduled to come online and around the same time. Um, do you think there's room for them all? Is there different niches? Is it like a winner take most scenario? How do you think about that? Well, I mean, I, I, I have the, 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 privilege or sin, depending on which way you want to look at it, um, of seeing this play out exactly once before. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, when we started small launch, uh, it looked exactly like this. Um, and you had, uh, uh, you know, a cadre of, of all kinds of folks, some, uh, some, some, you know, further advanced, some, you know, behind, some with way more capital. And, um, you know, the good thing about this game is that ultimately it doesn't really matter uh, you know, how many videos and, and presentations of starriness you have, uh, or in fact, how much capital you have. Um, it's, it's, it's like the ultimate leveler. Um, you know, physics doesn't care about any of that. Engineering doesn't care about any of that. And, uh, you know, I, I think the big, the biggest mistake a lot of companies make is they, they try and build a rocket and not build a business. Um, and everybody has their own little, little, little niche. And as I kind of cast my eye out, um, you know, across the this, you know, the, the competition and the, the emerging, uh, you know, developments of of medium launch. Um, it it looks it looks very, you know, it looks it's, it's almost like deja vu. In some cases, it's the same players, right? So, um, well, in most cases, it's the same players. So, um, look, I I think this will shape up exactly like small launch, um, uh, and um, you know, a, a lot of a lot of competitors. You know, haven't haven't really learned the lesson of building a company and not just building a rocket. So, you know, you might get one to the pad and then you know you're kind of one and done sort of a thing. Um, but you know, as we've always talked about, you know, the the hard thing here is 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 not not the first one or two or five. It's even even ten. It's it's like how do you how do you really build a sustainable production system and uh, and in a reliable vehicle that customers want to want want to fly on. So I think I think it'll it'll shake down like it always does, and um, it'll it'll end up in in uh, relatively small digit numbers of of folks. Okay, um, yeah, maybe just to follow up, um, would you say one of the like the best differentiators for Neutron would be like the production system and reliability, or is there other factors you think have going for you? There's a whole bunch there, um, yeah. you know. We, we've we've had the advantage of of operating a vehicle um, and flying it at, at volume and and ca and you know achieving a cadence and you know that 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 really you know fundamentally uh, you know feeds into the the design of the vehicle as well um, and there's so many lessons are learned on electron that we've rolled into neutron so many things like an electron that that would just really suck we go man if we ever had a chance to do that again we'd never do that um, and we have a chance to do that again. And then, you know, the architecture of, of Neutron, we think is really, really unique. Um, you know, having that, that second stage kind of out of the load path, tucked away inside the fairing there, uh, just, just makes that such a, a inexpensive, um, high performance upper stage, um, that, that we think is, you know, is, is, is really important. 
and then the just the operational things not not you know not throwing away fairings and then um you know all, all of the all of the kind of you know the geometry of the vehicle to reduce heating so you know heat, heating is your enemy with respect to reuse so you know there's there's just there's just a million things that are gone in there but you know it also rolls up in the back of all the production systems that we have in place um and and you know all of the launch kind of learnings and infrastructure so you know it it yeah i think i think if you're developing a, a new vehicle and you you don't have that experience i think that's a real tough learning on a on a big rocket yeah i bet um turning to small launch i'm kind of curious it looks like a lot of rockets that are trying to be up and coming are looking more at like a 1 ton payload kind of range mm. uh would you consider that to be a direct competitor to Electron? Is that almost like a different market segment? Um, how do you think about those? Well, look, I mean, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what the ideal payload, you know, lift was going to be um, with Electron and, and Neutron, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, our view is one ton, it's kind of a no man's land because if you, if you look at Electron, I mean, Electron has been incredibly successful. If you look at the payloads that we're lifting, they're all sort of in that 200 kg class sort of stuff. So the whole reason someone comes to a, you know, to a, a dedicated rocket is because, um, you know, they want a dedicated rocket. So putting a 200 kg payload in a one ton lift class, um, you know, I just don't see how you can be economic to, um, to be able to compete with a, you know, a, a, you know, a smaller 300 kg lift class. Mm -hmm. So then the argument made is you can make as well. Okay. If you, maybe it's a better rideshare vehicle. I mean, and it's a just, that's a terrible rideshare vehicle because now you're competing with, with a Falcon 9 and you just, there's just no way you can compete with that. So, you know, we, we really think that's sort of in a, in a bit of a no man's land and um, uh, it's, 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 it's too small to be a useful rideshare vehicle and too big to be a dedicated vehicle. Um, so uh, yeah, I, like I say, it's, it's, it's not really in a class in a class of its own. It's kind of, out in the wilderness of it in its own, really, in our opinion. Okay. Yeah, I guess time will tell uh, how that plays out. Um, in terms of space systems, I'm kind of curious about the solar market. So when I think of Solero, I kind of think of very high-end bespoke hardware. But then I look at some of these mega constellations coming online, and they seem to be going for you know cheap stuff because it's not lasting as long in orbit. Uh, are you interested in going after that kind of mega constellation market, or is that sort of different from what Solero would shoot for? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, as you say, that a lot of the a lot of the um, uh, mega constellations run silicon cells; they're, they're cheap and cheerful, um, and you know, which which there, there is a point in which that breaks because you have a you know a power requirement, and this, there you know there's so much less efficient, especially at end of life. Um, that you end up with these really, really big wings um, or solar solar panels hanging out the side of your spacecraft. Of course, they create a lot of drag. Um, to counteract that drag, you need electric propulsion to keep, you know, to, to orbit keep. Um, and of course, electric propulsion requires electrical power. So, you know, you end up at some point in this spiral of doom where you just keep having to put bigger and bigger panels to, you know, to to counteract the drag. So there is a point that it breaks. But, mm. um, but yeah, I mean, uh, the kind of solar that we do at Solero is significantly more expensive just by the nature of the raw materials. Um, but, uh, you know, outside of um, mega constellations, just about every spacecraft uh, uses uh, uses this, you know, the, the, the more um, you know, space hardened solar cells for, for a, a, you know, a variety of reasons, you know, not just having small wings, but, um, but you know, orbital lifetime. So the, you know, the radiation tolerance of those cells and, and, and whatnot. So yeah, if if you have a, a mega constellation, you expect it to survive on orbit for a few years, um, and uh, you know you're not too worried about the the kind of degradation of silicon, then it, it's it's always going to win. But almost everything else in the space industry will require uh, the, the you know the more traditional cells. Right. Okay. Um, and then I just saw in the news recently there was a breaking up of a Chinese rocket, and I think there was an event recently with a 
Russian satellite breaking up as well. Just kind of checking in. Uh, how concerned are you about space debris? And do you think there's a market there in the future for Rocket Lab? I guess that there already sort of is with Astroscale, mm. but a growing mm. market for, for you guys to take advantage of down the line? Yeah, I mean, space debris is something we're always uh, keen to talk about. Um, we think, you know, we, we've generally as an entrepreneur, I'm, I'm not, I'm not kind of advocating for regulation, but um, this is an instance where I certainly, certainly do. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it, it is, it is something we're all going to have to have to tackle and challenge. Um, but you know, th there are going to be events um, like the one you just saw uh, with the Chinese, right? There'll, there'll be accidents in orbit and. And there'll be there'll be um, these kind of events, and you know, really a global traffic management system is is required. So we, we're certainly a, uh, you know a supporter of that. Mm. And then with respect to a business, yep. So you did see some stuff from Astroscale, as, as you as you point out. But um, you know, I think it's it's a challenging business model to 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 go up to orbit and pull stuff down. Right. Um, and then I'm kind of curious on the neutron front. So down the line, once you eventually do start launching your own satellites, uh, do you have any idea of what kind of the breakdown would be between you know, launching your own stuff versus customers or how that would ramp up? Well, I mean, um, it's, it's, it's too early to say. I mean, right. I, I've always said that 50% of the reason why we're building electron, a neutron is to launch other people's stuff and 50% is to launch our own. Um, now, if you look at uh, our friends over at SpaceX, I think somewhere between eighty and ninety percent of all their launches is uh, is for themselves. So it really it really depends on the application and, and how many satellites are, are kind of required. But um, e either way, you know, th there still has to be a, a an alternative to you know essentially one provider and the medium launch capacity for everybody else. Sure. Um, okay. Thanks, guys. That was great. I will pass it on to Matt. So that was my portion of the discussion with Peter Beck. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do consider checking out those other channels for the other three quarters of the group interview we had, and I'll be sure to post that full discussion in another day or two. Again, if you haven't already subscribed, it would be very helpful if you'd consider doing that. Thank you so much. I hope you have a great day, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.